All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to a few out there. It is the Earth Master out here on this Tuesday, December 23rd, 2025, 11.52 a.m. West Coast time here where we're gearing up for uh, quite a quite a big rain and windmaker out here over the next couple days. Very hazardous conditions in terms of travel wise out here. I definitely do not advise traveling out here um during this week unfortunately it's probably one of the busiest weeks here for travel just got to be safe if you're out there uh, latest activity here on the earthquake 3d globe shows a 1.3 up into the alaska area uh, it does look like we got some deeper activity stirring up here across the globe up around the uh that's towards the izu trench here the northern end there's a 5.2 that struck over there uh, earlier this morning that's literally right off of the nankai trough zone as you can see here the nankai trough sits right here there's five segments segment a b c d and e this one is right up against e it looks like but underneath this area 209 miles deep so that is associated with the izu trench here but i guarantee you the uh, stress and strain is transferring right there to that region of the nankai trough and of course, section E here is the section that did not rupture during the last series of earthquakes there back in uh, 40, 1944, 1946. They seen a series of uh, eight pointers out here. The Nankai trough normally ruptures in pairs, uh, such as segment A and B, and then short time thereafter, C and D. Uh, and then occasionally they rupture all at once here. And the the ones that rupture all at once is normally uh, found during a time where one section does not rupture during the previous uh, events there. So good possibility uh, for our next rupture out here. We could see a, uh, you know, not a, par a partial rupture, but a complete full rupture here of the Nankai trough resulting in, of course, a larger earthquake. Could be up around the nine range or so. Uh, Got to watch that. Pretty deep earthquake, 5.2, uh, about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning there, uh, my time. All right, California, let's see what's going on out here across Southern California. Aside from a bunch of rain and wind, Southern California has an extreme, rare, high-risk flooding event coming up this week, and along with some tornado potential across uh, San Joaquin Valley and the portions of the coastline out here. We'll check that out towards the end of this uh, update as far as the weather goes. But uh, Southern California, see what we got. Uh, one earthquake after midnight, 2.7 up around the Big Bear Lake area. That is just off of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, a segment up there of the um, San Bernardino Mountains, about five miles deep or so. That is, of course, associated with the stress and strain that's uh, accumulated here between the North American and the Pacific Plate off to the west here. Um, nothing big going on for now. Just a handful of smaller microquakes out here uh, we got one here outside of santa monica earlier this morning as well just kind of keeping an eye on things it's pretty well locked over here across that portion of the plate boundary in fact you know if you look anywhere across california there's the plate boundary and numerous faults that are well locked and uh, very well strained Another earthquake off the San Andreas Fault here near Pinnacles. That uh, is just off the creeping section here of the San Andreas Fault. The Bay Area around San Ramon. Yeah, it looks like we had a couple more after midnight here. Uh, 2.7 and another two-pointer. Also one away from the area to the northwest. That looks like it's around the uh, uh, Hayward Fault up here. Nothing big going on there for now, but, you know, with the... Uh, ongoing earthquake activity and the swarms that we've seen here recently it's a uh, good to be on guard of course numer numerology right when it comes to important dates and uh, uh, holidays and festivities it seems like natural hazards and disasters such as earthquakes tend to occur close or on those specific dates i'm not saying there's going to be an earthquake on christmas or christmas eve but it, it just you know, look back at history here. We've had a number of large events take place or natural hazards and disasters take place uh, during important dates in human history. Uh, Cascadia subduction zone, another 2.3 down here. This one 11 miles deep into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Trimmer activity here last night, fairly amplified. Actually, it was up here around Oregon. Let me show you guys real quick the... Um, trimmer map from yesterday 
it was definitely on the elevated side as you can see we had 159 epicenters of trimmer activity this comes following about four days of very quiet conditions out here now this activity underneath this region of oregon is associated with the deeper area of the cascadia subduction zone underneath this region here so we've seen a, a number of earthquakes out here in the gorda ridges including this most recent one uh, from late last night so i do expect maybe some um, trimmer counts being elevated down across northern california this evening once we get the uh, latest information out We'll watch for that but you know over the last seven days a number of earthquakes out here along the blanco fracture zone it's a strike slip boundary and most of the time when we get earthquakes out here it kind of stresses the area directly in this pattern right right down here uh, and that's kind of where the uh, the uh, slow slip events are occurring underneath this area of oregon uh, we'll watch for that later tonight see what they come out come up with far as the uh, counts go uh, Washington right now, not a whole lot going on. A couple smaller earthquakes, including one on the Seattle Fault up there, east of Seattle, along the uh, this little segment of the Seattle Fault. 1.3, nothing big going on there for now. Uh, let's see, just typical microquake activity across Utah for now. Up in the Yellowstone National Park, one little earthquake from yesterday. Well, let's, let's go verify that, make sure we got the... Uh, latest information here from the usgs yellowstone website we'll check out ymc and uh it, see there's still that activity from yesterday that did show up on on another seismograph station but not many others so i still don't know what that was looks like some type of event maybe locally to the seismograph station or maybe well underneath this area it's hard to say either way far as earthquake activity goes yeah there's not a whole lot I don't see a whole lot here overnight in this morning so far. Maybe a little tiny one in the last few minutes or so. But uh, nothing nothing of any noteworthy uh, mentioning there. As uh, far as the rest of the country goes, Texas rocking and rolling out in the oil fields. New Madrid seismic zone. Two earthquakes there from yesterday. It does look like we had another one uh, late last night out there near Lynn, Arkansas. That sits just out, outside the New Madrid seismic zone here. All right, uh, let's take a look here at the bigger picture of things. I uh, did have a couple fours up here along the northern end of the Curl Kamchatka. But like I say, this deeper activity around the Nankai Trough there, a little concerning. We'll watch that. Also some deep activity off the coast there of Sumatra. That's a pretty deep earthquake. Three-pointer, 750 kilometers. Goodness, I think that's maxed out there. So that is a uh, pretty significant not a big earthquake, but a rather deep one. Pretty good cluster of activity here across the um, Indonesia area right now. Let's see, New Zealand's starting to pick up some movement down here in the three range. It's always threes, three, three, three right down here. We got two 3.5s and a three pointer. Nothing big happening for now there. Uh, South America, uh, we do have some activity stirring up there along the Chile region southern end of the Peru Chile Trench uh, but aside from that uh, not so much m big activity going on I don't even think we've seen anything major today yet uh, the largest quake so far in the last 24 hours goes to this 5.2 pretty deep there underneath Papua New Guinea area 122 miles deep uh, stirred up about two o'clock this morning here my time so a little light in terms of larger magnitudes, but you know we, we do have to watch these deeper quakes. There's there's at least three of them here. This, this one down here across Papua New Guinea. Notice that's raised off the globe. Uh, but these two other ones up here, man, those are super deep. Kind of in a triangle fashion here. So just watch this area closely. Uh, space weather activity today. Well, not so much aurora activity, huh? That was kind of a flop again. Even though we had a massive coronal hole facing us there a number of days ago, that high-speed solar wind stream is should have it's well past us now for sure. It doesn't take a week to get here. At the most, it takes 72 hours. But that was a rather weak high-speed solar wind stream. Really never stirred up anything as far as the auroras go or any type of geomagnetic storm. It is still fairly massive out here, covering a good portion of the southern area of the sun, stretching all the way back here. That's a one of the more lengthier, larger coronal holes I've seen in quite a while. 
Uh, but this is pointing towards the south. That will not affect us in terms of any high-speed solar wind stream arriving at the planet. Uh, and we're left with, uh, let's see what we got here for sunspots today. We're up in the C category, C 1.2, starting to go up a little bit above that B level. Let's see what we got going on here. This one's just fading off. Same with this area, although I noticed these two regions split, and this has its own little uh, complexity sunspot or magnetic structure around it right now. That one looks like it's it broke off this main one and starting to get uh, a little complex there. That may be an area to watch. Also, uh, let's see what we got up here. Still kind of keeping an eye on this one. It's definitely has some uh, some coverage area, but it's not super complex out there. Again, I don't see anything major here in the forecast in near term as far as any major solar flares. You may see another C or M flare. Uh, from either this sunspot area, maybe down here as well. Uh, but we'll watch that. Let's see what we got coming on the far side real quick. Take a peek around the sun. It's kind of neat to be able to see that. Now, this is, yeah, this is from the 22nd. So it's about a day or so old, maybe a day and a half. But it does give us an idea of what's coming around. We do have a, a fairly massive area out here on the far side that should be coming into view here on, on the eastern limb of the sun pretty soon. I believe that was the area, you guys remember that super large massive sunspot complex that was out here weeks ago? I'm sure you guys seen it here on this video, on this channel. Um, well, that's it. It's not as lengthy, but it looks like it's grown in size in terms of the um, uh, coverage area as far as being round, I guess. You know, it's got a circular type set up out there so it'll be interesting to see what that is doing what's once it comes into view we may be seeing a little bit bit of it right now see this little bright feature out there we'll get a glimpse of that sunspot uh in the uh, coming days we'll see if that comes back around and uh maybe wants to fire off some uh, strong flares or not we'll, we'll have to wait and see all right, so no major aurora activity in the forecast. The flare threat will remain as is. 30% chance for M flare, X flare around 5% chance or so. Uh, taking a quick glance at any close approach asteroids to the planet this week. See if there's any surprises. That one's a massive one. That's newly discovered as well. See, they're always discovering small ones and even big ones out here. You'd be surprised at how much, uh, how many asteroids are floating around near the planet. Uh, but that one's coming, uh, that's pretty far, 2,470,000 miles away from planet Earth, 300-foot building-sized asteroid. That would, you know, hey, that would leave a pretty good mark. Don't want that anywhere near the planet. Uh, but everything's fairly safe out there as far as distance-wise goes. All right, now Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Look at this. Over the next couple days here, including Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you got a marginal risk for some severe weather, even today out here across the California area for some tornado potential along the coastline. If I didn't have family uh, festivities set up this week and today, um, I would I would be going over there looking for some water spouts. That'd be kind of neat to see. You don't see that too often out here, but we got a very dynamic setup uh, coming into California. Uh, not so much for hail. We got wind and the tornado potential out there today. Uh, for Christmas Eve here, that uh, link, well, that looks like it moves in uh, just south of me here around Sacramento, maybe Yuba City as well, for a slight chance there for some tornado activity, some damaging wind gusts as well, even uh, maybe some hail in there. Pretty crazy to see. Uh, and then uh, for Christmas Day out here, back across the coastline uh, for some tornado threat again. Uh, let me show you guys the dynamics here of what's coming in across the west coast. Bring up the western U.S. map because that's technically where all the weather's happening at right now. And this is where I'm at, so I'm, I'm actually enjoying it. I, don't, I really don't have to worry too much about flooding specifically here where I'm at right now. Just some localized flooding. Um, I'm more concerned about power outages coming up, but I'm even prepared on that. So, uh, But this is the uh, storm system coming in. Uh, late tonight and over the next couple days, bringing with it a bunch of rainfall there for Southern California, Santa Monica Mountains area, 
uh, Los Angeles. These guys are underneath a rare high risk flooding hazard over the next couple days. I'm talking about a lot of precipitation coming into Southern California, Northern California as well. A uh, snow level will begin to drop out here, and what will fall is a, a bunch of it, a bunch of snow. We're talking feet and feet of snow up in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Heavy-duty snow as multiple rounds of systems come in there to California. The weekend here, towards the weekend, looks a little quiet. And then we got that cutoff low looping back up into Southern California, interacting here with the jet stream as it comes back across the West Coast uh, towards the middle and end of next week. And then it does look like we'll be back into uh, another wet pattern out here again. Uh, the total accumulated precipitation runs out here. Pretty impressive. I think they're being a little lenient down here across this area. Uh, but even so, down there across the uh, Malibu area and, and into the mountains above Los Angeles, those guys are looking at, man, seven, eight, maybe nine inches of rainfall coming up here. That type of rainfall ooh, will definitely cause some issues out there for sure. Um, and we'll see what it does to all the fault systems. Uh, because California is going to get soaked out here. This is one of our more uh, our bigger systems in quite a while. You know, in Southern California, had a very wet November, and you dump all these uh, all these next systems that are coming in here. I'm kind of curious to see what it will do here to the vaults and the plate boundary because well, you know everything's locked. It's compacted as can be. You put a little, a little bit of moisture down there, even at the surface levels where the uh, faults are you know fairly well locked as well. Um, it could potentially cause a little uh, domino effect here with earthquake activity. Watch that closely. All right, uh, seismograph stations out there. Oh, what do we got coming into Russia right now? A little earthquake. Nothing big. That looks like maybe a four-pointer somewhere out there. Maybe even smaller. I don't. I don't even see it showing up there for now. 3.1, the latest quake here. Um, in the Greece area, it looks like. Nothing big. There's a little bit of uptick going on here today. Uh, over the last couple days, it's been relatively quiet, but things are stirring up right now. So just be on guard, folks. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, Tuesday night update. Have a wonderful day, and uh, just be prepared.